Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert IELTS teachers here at E2 Language. Uh, what we're going to do is not write an essay. Instead, we're going to look at some top tips. One tip in particular, which I'm afraid to say will come right at the end of this presentation, but I need to take you through this presentation so that that tip at the end really makes sense to you and so you fully utilize it to your benefit. So what we're gonna do specifically is look at real tips for how to score an eight plus in writing task two, okay? Let me first tell you my little experience. Maybe you've heard this before, maybe you haven't. I'm an English teacher, obviously. I'm a native English speaker. I had to take the IELTS four times before I got a decent score in writing. I could get nines in reading, listening and speaking. Not no problem, it was still challenging. But writing, I got stuck on 7.5 three times. And so I did some investigation into why it is that I got stuck and why so many people get stuck at sort of 6.5 to 7. And it turns out that there are certain ways that you need to write your essay in order to boost your score. So one of those ways is looking at grammar. And that's what we're gonna look at here. These ugly looking things are what the examiners use to mark your writing. And there's one here which focuses on two things grammatical range and grammatical accuracy, okay? These two things are key for boosting your score. The first one, grammatical range means variety of sentence types, okay? You need to use a variety of different sentence types to boost your score. And grammatical accuracy, well, it means grammatical accuracy, that your sentences are correct and accurate and there's S on the end of plural nouns and you use articles properly and your verb tenses are straight, etc. Have a look at these two paragraphs. These two paragraphs have perfectly accurate grammar. Okay, so imagine that you wrote these two paragraphs and everything you wrote was just 100% accurate. However, there's a big problem here. And that problem is range. These sentences are all simple sentences or compound sentences. There are no complex sentences. There are no uh, modal verbs. There are no question sentences. There are no conditionals. They're all just simple sentences. So what score do you think you would get for grammar? You would get a four, because here in the criteria, what the examiners look at, it says rare use of subordinate clause. I'm gonna show you what a subordinate clause is in a minute, but the maximum score you can get, the maximum score you can get if you do not use a variety of sentence structures is four. Okay, so even if your accuracy is nine, but your range is four, your score for grammar will be four. That's the highest you can possibly get. So let's say then, let's say you wrote perfectly on task and you answered the essay question and the examiner gave you an eight for that part. And this way that you structured the essay and structured your paragraphs the examiner gave you an eight for that part. And your vocabulary was excellent, it was very wide ranging, so the examiner gave you an eight for that part, but the examiner gave you a four for grammar because your range was limited. In that case, the average for your total writing band score would be seven, because the four brings it down to seven. And let's say the same thing happened here, you got seven for tasks, seven for structure, seven for vocab, and four for grammar. The maximum score you can get for writing then, because of the grammar score, is six, right? So the super tip is this. You need to use a wide variety of sentence types in your essay, and if you don't, the same thing will happen to you that happened to me, and your mark will get stuck on something poor, okay? So, what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to look at different sentence types. I'm gonna show you seven, seven? I can't remember, six or seven different sentence types, but we're specifically gonna focus in on complex sentences and a particular type of complex sentence called a subordinate clause. Don't worry, it sounds crazy, but it's pretty easy. You probably already know it. So let's have a look. 
So in fact, I want to show you six different sentence types. First of all, let's start with simple sentences. These are obviously quite straightforward. So a simple sentence has one idea. Let's use the question prompt. The, let's say the question prompt said something about the government should tax sugary drinks. That's your writing task to essay prompt or part of it. So here are three simple sentences. This is one, two, three. Sugar makes people unhealthy. Okay, it's got, it's got a subject, it's got a verb, and it's got an object here. Or people gain weight from sugar. Okay, it's again, sh subject, verb, object. Sugar harms people's teeth. These three are examples of simple sentences. You should definitely include simple sentences in your essay, but again, it's about variety. So let's look at compound sentences. Compound sentences are when you have one idea plus another idea. For example, let's say the question prompt again is government should tax sugary drinks. You say sugar makes people unhealthy and it harms their teeth. So here we're using a conjunction like and, for, yet, but, so, or, or nor. There's a few different conjunctions or different ways that you can create a compound sentence. Fine. These ones though are the critical ones. You need to include what I'm about to show you into your essay and I suggest you include at least five, at least five of these complex sentences using these words. These are the words that the IELTS examiners look for. These are the sentence types that create subordination, which I'll show you in a second. After, although, as, because, before, even if, even though, if, in order that, once, provided that, rather than, since, so that, than, that, though, unless, until, when, whenever, where, whereas, who, whether, while, and which. Okay? So let's have a look at some examples here. So what a complex sentence does, it coordinates two or more ideas into a single sentence. So the prompt is the government should tax sugary drinks. My complex sentence using the connector while is this. While some people will support the tax, others will be against it. So let's remove this and let's have a look at, let's say it just said some people will support the tax, full stop. Others will be against it. So here I've got two simple sentences, but if I use one of these uh, subordinate clause type words like while, I can create a complex sentence, okay? And these are the sentences that make you win in IELTS writing. So what I did on my fourth attempt after I investigated and did all this homework and realized what was going on and actually had a meeting with uh, the IELTS people, when I wrote my fourth attempt, I thought, okay, usually when I write essays or emails or whatever, I like to write short, simple sentences because I believe that they're clearer, but that's not what you should do in the IELTS. You need to use a variety, as I said. So what I did on the fourth attempt was I use a whole variety of different sentence types. I use complex ones and compound ones and simple ones. I even put questions in and made sure they were passive. I used modal verbs, da, 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 da. But I made sure that I had at least five of these complex structures. Now I want you to try to write a few, okay? I'm gonna give you two minutes to write three complex sentences. The prompt is the government should tax sugary drinks. So your complex sentence will go, although, dot, 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 da, comma, dot, 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 da, full stop. Or, dot, 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 da, so that, dot, 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 da, because, dot, 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 da, comma, dot, 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 da. So try to fill these gaps with um, some information from the prompt. You have two minutes to write three complex sentences to increase your IELTS band score starting now.
Okay, uh, maybe you need more time. I'm seeing people are sort of still on the first type of sentence. Uh, let me push on. What I want you to do, if you haven't finished, I want you to pause the video, go back, and finish those three sentences, okay? I'm going to show you mine, but if you haven't finished, please go back and do that now. Let me show you mine. Okay, here are my examples. Although people will benefit, companies will suffer. Again, let's look at this because what's going on? Let's say we get rid of this and we just have people will benefit, companies will suffer. Two simple sentences. Or I can make a complex sentence using this powerful word here. What about so that? The government should tax sodas so that the public becomes healthier. Okay, again, I've got two simple sentences, but I've created a complex sentence using so that. What about number three? Using the word because at the beginning of the sentence. Because people are becoming more obese, the government should tax sugary drinks. There you go. It's actually... I shouldn't say it's not that hard. It's hard to get these accurate and you definitely need to practice them because as I said without them Four is the maximum score you can get in grammar. Okay. I seriously mean that you can double check the criteria if you want They're extraordinarily important sentence types So the big take care message is this you need to use complex sentences in your writing task One and two by the way use it in both of your writing tasks Let's have a quick look at the other sentence types before we finish. So passive sentences. So the prompt again, the government should tax sugary drinks. Well, a passive sentence is when you reverse the order of the subject and the object. For example, here's the active sentence. Food scientists know that sugary drinks are addictive. But let's say we want to reverse this order and we don't want to talk about food scientists. We can say sugary drinks are known to be addictive. Okay, so I've created a passive form from the active form there. So passive sentences are also important in your writing to show variety. Let's have a look at a question sentence. But would a sugar tax really work? My suggestion here is to use one question in your essay. I think they work really well if they're placed properly, okay? They can work really well in, I put one in my last one where I got the 8.5 and I think I put it in the introduction. But it was just a short, simple sentence as a question type and it just created a nice sort of narrative voice for the essay and it just added to my variety. So do think about putting perhaps one question into your essay there because it can work well. And the last one are conditional, sent. last one is or are conditional sentences. These are somewhat complex. These are conditional sentences are sentences that start with if, if sentences. So if the government had taxed sugary drinks earlier, then we would not have an obesity issue now. So how do you strike a balance though between grammatical range and grammatical accuracy? Because perhaps if you're attempting to use a wider variety of sentence types, your accuracy will go down. Or maybe if you're trying to be very accurate, your grammatical range will go down. So how do you strike that balance between variety and accuracy? That's a critical question. The question is, do you need to strike a balance? Here's the thing. If you do not attempt, if there is rare use of subordinate clauses, in other words, you rarely use complex structures, then you will get a four, okay? But if you attempt complex sentences, even if they're less accurate, remember this is the same thing that the IELTS examiners are looking at when they're marking your writing, you can get a five. Of course, if you're, even if, let's say you're a native English speaker, so your accuracy is nine, you should definitely try to uh, attempt a wide variety of different sentence structures because then it will just boost your score. But even if your English is quite poor and you're worried about accuracy, 
at least try to use a wide variety. So the take home message, the key point that I wanted to talk about right at the beginning, which I led you through is this. Variety, sentence variety is more important than sentence accuracy. So on test day, you should attempt to use a wide variety of sentence types, including the six that I showed you in this live class. And even if the accuracy is not 100%, doesn't matter, it will increase your chances of scoring better than if you are conservative and just attempt simple structures. That, my friend, is the end of that presentation. If you need help with your IELTS in any way, speaking, listening, reading, writing, check out e2language.com, sign up for free, and you may want to think about upgrading your account for one-on-one -on -one tutorials, writing feedback, lots of practice questions, sample essays, overview lessons, methodology lessons like this one that take you through everything. The course can last, well, there's a lot of material. It can last about three to six months if you want to do it slowly, or you can blast through it in about a week to get the main stuff there. So do check out that website. If you have any questions, do check out this one here. Go to help.e2language.com, help.e2language.com. So it's the same as this, but help.e2language.com. Ask your question, we'll get back to you with an answer, okay? Cool bananas.